Hello everyone! Um, welcome to part two of my sable embroidery series. If you um, haven't seen part one yet and you would like to, you can check for a link in my description and find it there. So, um, right about now we're starting to fill in Sable's face. Um, in this um, piece I'm using an embroidery needle. Um, a very teeny tiny embroidery needle with some DMC thread um, and I'm just doing a bunch of satin stitches over and over and over again to fill in her face right here. Um, almost all of this is satin stitches um, other than the little freckles on her nose. Um, those are French knocks. Um, if you guys would ever like a video on how I do these kinds of things, like slow down, please let me know. I would love to do it. <laughs> Um, for, for right now, this is just kind of like a progressy y um, watch me embroider or embroider with me. Um, I love to watch creative videos while I'm embroidering. While I'm embroidering, I think it's a really good way to stay inspired and, you know, create new ideas while you're still working in something um, already, so. Um, as I said, I'm using DMC thread here. I'm using two strand. Oops, I'm using two strands of DMC thread. Um, if you are not familiar with embroidery or embroidery floss specifically, um, typically embroidery floss comes in six different strands that are all kind of like wound together in a way. Um, they're not like glued together or anything, so it's really easy to separate them. So typically, what you'll see from embroidery artists is they will um, split the threads and only use some of them at a time. So for instance, instead of all six threads, which would look really thick and bulky, and um, personally I think a little messy, I'm only using two here. Um, that gives me a lot more range of like um, detail and specificity within what I'm doing. It just makes it a lot easier for me to embroider smaller things. Excuse me, my phone is going off. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm using two here, so um, hopefully eventually in this video I'll be able to point out when I'm actually separating them, although this video is being um, sped through. Um, maybe you'll catch a glimpse of it at one point, I don't know. So I'm just filling out her face here. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, when I'm doing these types of Animal Crossing embroideries, I typically do the smallest details first, um, on the face especially. So if the character obviously has eyes and a nose and little freckles and things like that, I will do those first and um, then it allows me to be able to fill it in a little bit easier. I find that if I am to do it in the reverse order, it'll be um, really difficult to kind of like make the smaller details look clean um, and sometimes it leaves spaces where I wouldn't want spaces. Um, so that's why, that's how I do it I suppose. Um, typically when I'm doing my, typically when I'm doing my Animal Crossing embroidery, I start with the small details of the face and then the ears and then I fill out the face, then I'll do the body and then I'll do their clothes. I find the clothes are easiest to do last. Not sure why. It just feels right, I suppose. That's just the way I do it. Um, anyway, if you're not familiar with this character, um, this is Sable Abel from the Animal Crossing series. Um, she's a little hedgehog and she works um, this clothing shop with her sister Mabel. Um, which is just really adorable, which is why she's wearing a cute little apron, because she's kind of a shopkeep, so good for her, I guess. <laughs> um, what else was I going to say? Here I'm working on her ears, um, and just doing satin stitches kind of like in the diagonal direction from the outside of the ear to the, the bottom part of the ear. Um, I find that doing satin stitches in this way gives the character a little bit more dimension. Um, for the faces and for their bodies, I um, typically do kind of like vertical type stitches, if that makes sense. Um, 
I feel like this is the best way to show direction in the body, so if the face is tilted a certain way, I can kind of tilt the thread a certain way. Um, so that is how I control kind of like the direction in which my stitches are going. I, I've gotten questions about that a few times. Um, so for um, ears, like I discussed in my part one, um, I typically like go all the way around um, in little, little loops, I suppose, if you're really thinking about it from like an outside kind of perspective. Um, and that gives a little more shape. It's all satin stitches, but there's just way more of them than um, there would be if you were just going from top of the hoop to the bottom. Um, so it really depends, but for the most part, it's in a vertical um, fashion. Um, going up and down. But there are exceptions, of course, like I just said. <laughs> anyway, what am I doing here? Oh, um, I believe... Oh, I just separated the thread, if, if you happen to catch that. Um, separating my two strands from the rest. And here I have a little goof up. One of the threads went through, but the other didn't, and then I made this big tangled mess, um, which happens all the time. It is simply the name of the game. Um, when this happens, I try my best to kind of like salvage whatever happened um, because I really don't like wasting thread. I'm not sure what it is about it, but it just does not feel right if I am uh, wasting thread. I have a whole little box of thread scraps that I feel like I could still use in the future, which might sound a little crazy, but it's true. I have a big, big box of threads that I think would still be viable to use that are still long enough um and all of them are scraps from previous works that i've done um normally when i reach into that bin it's to find like a black or a white thread um you know like the simplest 310 black or the what white do i use oh it's literally blanc yeah dmc is a, th is a french brand but their blackest black is a, a number but their whitest white oops is a um name they're pure like tan off-white eggshell kind of color um it's called a crew which is actually the color i use on sable's face here um so it's interesting that i mean obviously about 90 percent of their threads are number based but there are a few of them that are name based and can get a little confusing if you're not on top of it i suppose um, it's been a goal of mine to get every single DMC color, and here I am looking for, looking for one that I missed. Um, I find that when I'm doing little embroidery projects like this, um, it's easier for me to pick out all of the colors, um, right away at the beginning before I start sewing because it gets kind of annoying to go back and forth between my thread boxes, um. I really don't like having to search for thread when I just want to get down to embroidering, so I will take a little bit of extra time before I start to pick out all the colors um, that I need for the entire project, unless it's like a big, big hoop, and I, I'll need like tons and tons of colors. Um, typically for these Animal Crossing ones, it's probably around 10 colors each, for each character, I think, um, more or less. I'm not sure how many I had for this one. Let's see. I have black, white, that little orangey color, the tan of the face, the darker inside ear color, two pinks, and a white. So that's, what is that? That's eight. Eight colors. I think that's all of them. Um, so that's not, that's not too bad. It's easy for me to pick out eight colors right away and then just get to it. Um, yeah, here I am working on her little checkered apron. That's so cute. Um, actually, while I was doing this, I thought I made a huge mistake, and I thought I placed a bunch of the pink boxes in the wrong places before I realized that um, it creates a darker pink when the checkers kind of like the rows of pink kind of line up, if that makes sense. If you're thinking about like a checkered pattern and it's like red and white, the red is always darker where those original red squares meet. Um, and I didn't really take that into account, and that's why I had to pick another pink color from the box, because, um, I hadn't picked it, and, um, I thought I was gonna have to redo the whole thing, but then I realized that, like, 
I kind of knew what I was doing. I just forgot to pick out a darker pink color. So good for me, I suppose. Now I'm working on the white in between the little checkers, um, little boxes. So cute. I just think Animal Crossing is so cute. Um, I get lots of Animal Crossing commissions. I probably get about a few a week, um, which is a lot for me, being that I'm still a full-time college student. <laughs> and um, they're just so much fun for me to do. I get so excited when I have another Animal Crossing embroidery to do. They just like really bring so much joy to my heart. Um, I enjoy the whole process from start to finish and I love mailing them out because I know that people love this game just as much as I do and that anything they see from it is just like a breath of fresh air and it's just so cute, so simple, um, so childlike in the best way. Um, for anyone who's never played Animal Crossing before, I recommend that you do. <laughs> There's a new one coming out March 1st. March 1st, March 20th of 2020, I believe that's the right date off the top of my head. Um, so hopefully I'm right about that. And I'm so excited. I haven't had a new Animal Crossing game till I was about a sophomore, I think, in high school, probably around that time. And I still play the most recent one, New Leaf, to this day. Um, not every day, of course, because I have pretty much done everything in the game, but um, it's a really good, calming game that I think is, is good for anyone who just needs a breath of fresh air. Um, so yeah, I'm finishing up her apron here. Just little tiny satin stitches in a box, vertically up and down. Um, Let's see what I'm up to next. Just type, oh, here we go. It's the next day. <laughs> I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but this whole process, I think, took me about four hours from start to finish, of recording at least. Um, and although I could sometimes be embroidering from start to finish in one setting for four hours, I have done that before. Um, I did not do that here. So there's about two days of footage in these two different videos, part one and part two. Um, now I'm working on the ground, but yeah, you can see the lighting changes. I did my best to kind of like color correct everything, but you know how it is. It's a little bit different and difficult to do when the lighting is changing constantly because each clip is from like hours apart <laughs> and my room gets a lot of sunlight, um, and gets very dark at night, of course. I, um... Off topic, I suppose, but I only really have yellow lighting in my room because I think it's nice and moody. So it's just a very different look than the cloudy sun coming through my window, as you see kind of like right here, I think. Maybe it's already later. I don't know, but I'm finishing up the ground, which is the same color as her little eyelids. I like having unity of color in my work. And I think that's it for all the embroidery, so we're gonna move over to the next part. Yeah, here I am showing the camera. <laughs> so cute. Um, and here's how I back my hoop. So first I cut out all the excess fabric, and I'm gonna take my curling iron and start getting rid of the pen marks. So I use friction pens, which are technically erasable pens, and they are able to be erased with heat because they're technically supposed to be erased with the little rubber weird part at the end of the pen, but if you just use like a, an iron or something, it immediately disappears. Um, I'm tracing the backing of my hoop. I have a little stencil for this, and I cut it out and make sure that it fits because all of the hoops are a little bit different. And I went to take a stamp. This little floral thing, really cute, just some ink. I'm gonna stamp that down and then get my dirty ink fingerprints all over it. And then I trace my little logo, the cute little flowers underneath it. I just think it's so cute. And this is one of my favorite parts. I literally just use my laptop for this. I take a hot glue gun and glue it down, glue all those threads together. And then I start tucking in the edges and it creates this really, really cute little effect once it's all done. But yeah, that's about the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave me a comment, subscribe, check out my um, my Instagram, my Etsy, my Twitter, you know, all that, all that jazz. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again here soon. I have a Stitches video coming up soon from Animal Crossing, so look forward to that. All right, bye guys.